Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. Creating a fly sound with the operator instrument. Starting off with the new live set, I'll make sure to have a MIDI channel selected over here. Over on the live devices, expand the instruments folder and drag in an instance of operator. Now you can create the same fly sound that you just heard by copying the same settings that I have in operator throughout this tutorial. We'll be using one oscillator to create this sound and we'll also be in the additive synthesis mode which should be the default setting for operator. Let's start off on oscillator A and change the course to 2. Let's go over and adjust the envelope for this sound. You can just copy the same settings that I have. I'll be creating a pretty high initial point of this envelope. The reason is, is because we're actually going to loop this envelope. You're going to press your finger on the key, the sound will play, and the envelope will loop over and over. But when the envelope ends and it goes back to the beginning, I want it to be a very nice, smooth transition. That's why we have such a high initial point here. So for the initial point of this envelope, just enter in a negative 12. So that'll be a negative 12 dB. Now for the peak point, enter in a negative 2.1. So I'll go ahead and click here, minus 2.1, enter, and change the attack to 3.1. 79 seconds, or you can just round it off to 3.80 seconds if you want. So I'll go ahead and grab this right here and drag this over and look at the attack setting as I do this. And I'll bring it in here, just about 3.79 seconds. Seems like where it wants to rest. That's just fine. Now over here with the decay and the sustain, for the decay, change this to 4.34. So that's 4.34 seconds. There you go. And the sustain, make sure that's set to a negative 16 dB. And you can just enter this with the keyboard. Go ahead and click here and enter in negative 16. There we go. Okay. And for the release, let's go ahead and just make this about 8 seconds. Or you can put 7 or 8 seconds. It's fine. Okay, so that's just the basis of the sound here. But here's something really cool. We can have this envelope just loop over and over and over again. And we're going to do that by selecting the little loop drop down menu right here. And just select loop from that menu. Okay, and for the time you can leave this at 100 milliseconds. Now we can go ahead and try this out. I'm going to just hold the key down and play the sound and watch the envelope. But listen to the sound and you can see the envelope just repeat itself over and over. Here we go. Now for the fly sound, the sine wave is pretty soft. So we need to change this to a sawtooth. And for the sound that I've designed, I've chosen a sawtooth 64 preset, which is right here on the wave menu. Go ahead and click here. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just right here, just going off the screen, saw 64. There it is, I'll go ahead and play the sound. All right, let's go ahead and continue over on the low frequency oscillator, which is right here. Go ahead and activate this. Go ahead and turn it on. And for the envelope, we don't need to do a whole lot here. Just make sure the release time has a good timing on it. We don't want the LFO release time to end before oscillator A's envelope time release. So we need to extend this beyond oscillator A's release time. So I can just uh, go past, make that 20, 25. It doesn't really matter. Somewhere around there will be just fine. Now for the LFO, we'll need to set uh, what type of modulation we want for this LFO. Now the sine wave is a pretty typical modulation for 
a low frequency oscillator. It just kind of goes up and down, up and down. And that's really cool. Uh, I can go ahead and just play the sound here. Okay, pretty common. But we're going to want to set this modulation to a noise modulation. So I'm going to just go ahead and click and select noise from this right here. This is going to allow us to create a very uh, randomized, kind of a grungy randomized type modulation. It's just going to give it a lot more character. So let's go ahead and hear that back. And for the rate, let's go ahead and just turn this all the way down to zero. I'm not sure what the default setting would be, but if it is turned up or if it does have a value, just turn it down to zero or you can just enter in zero on the keyboard. Now for the amount, enter in 70% for that LFO amount. There we go. Let's go ahead and hear the sound. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit closer to that fly sound. Now the sound has a little bit of a low end tone to it, but don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and fix that with the filter and operator. So go ahead and over to the filter mode, go ahead and turn this on. And instead of having a low pass, which is the default setting, let's go ahead and change this to a high pass 12 dB filter. So it's just right down here, high pass 12 dB, and let's go ahead and check it out. Sounds pretty cool. We can hear that randomness of the noise modulation for LFO. And then we are cutting off the lower frequencies in the sound by using a high pass. And the high pass means that you're just allowing the high frequencies to pass through. If we were to use a low pass, we could adjust and cut off the higher frequencies from the lower frequencies. So next, let's go ahead and adjust the frequency cutoff here for this filter. So you can just enter in or just adjust this somewhere around 2.50, 2.54, somewhere around there. And for the resonance, you can go ahead and keep that the same. Let's go ahead and hear it back. Okay, pretty cool. If you notice, the sound has a very, very constant pitch to it. And believe it or not, when you have the fly buzzing around your head, there's a Doppler shift happening there. So depending on if the fly is close to your ear or far away, it will change in pitch. Okay, and the way we can achieve that is by using the pitch envelope right here. So go ahead and activate this section, turn this on, and we're going to create some type of wavy envelope for this pitch. So for the initial point, uh, let's see what we got here. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out here so we have another point to work with, another little handle here. And then we have our initial point here, the same as we do for the other envelopes and operator. And I'm going to change this initial to a positive 31 semitone. So the, uh, the adjustment's right here. So you go ahead and click here. You can drag the mouse up to a positive 32 or 31, sorry. Go ahead and just make that 31 semitones. And then I will adjust the attack of this. And I'm going to go about six seconds because I want that pitch sound to be very gradual, but I don't want it too long. So I'm just going to make this around almost seven seconds long. I'll just bring this over here. There we go. And for the peak time or the peak level of this attack here, uh, we can just enter in a positive 23 semitones. So I'll just enter in 23, press enter for that. Okay, now for the decay, we're gonna wanna make this uh, not too long, somewhere around two and a half, three seconds. So I'll just grab this point here and drag this to the right. And let's make this about yeah, somewhere 2.63 seconds is fine. And for the uh, sustain here, let's go ahead and make this a positive 31 semitone. So I'll just enter in 31 and press enter. And for the release time, let's go ahead and stretch this out a little bit. This way, when we release our finger off the key, the sound will slowly fade out because we have a slow release on oscillator number one, as seen here, but the pitch of the sound will change as the sound slowly fades out. But it, the pitch is all determined on where this release time is set. So 
If I stretch this out a little bit here, we can increase the release time. I'm going to make this around 20 seconds long. But if I move this up, the sound will increase in pitch as I release my finger off the key. If this is below this point here, it will lower in pitch. So for this sound, I'm going to make this about, oh, we're going to do about, about a positive 34 semitones, which is what I initially used for my sound. And this is pretty much exact. And you have this little anchor here. You can adjust the smoothness between these points. I'm just going to set this here somewhere just to smooth it out a little bit. So you want something that looks like this. It's going down and then it moves up a little bit and then it starts to straighten out. And then for the release, the pitch will just gradually move up just a tad bit. Now this is totally customizable. This is just what I used when experimenting and modeling the sound. So before we continue, let's go ahead and listen to what we have. Here we go. Okay, there's only one problem. We don't hear any pitch. The reason is because we must give the envelope some type of pitch value in the master adjustment here. So I'm going to go ahead and just click here and let's enter in about 20, 21 percent. I'll just enter in 21 since that's the same value that I used. There we go. Now let's try it again. Now you can hear the sound slowly move down in pitch. You have to sort of imagine as you press the key on the keyboard, watch the envelope as it slopes down and listen to the pitch slope down as well. Here we go. You can almost count the seconds. So if I have this attack set to almost seven seconds, well, the sound is going to pitch down till it reaches this point, and then it's going to slowly move up in pitch, okay, as it reaches the sustain. So watch this. I'll go ahead and press the key, and you can almost count to seven seconds, and, uh, and you'll hear the change in the sound. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and that's how I make my sounds. It's really nice to have these envelopes because you can almost visualize the sound. You almost know what it's going to sound like before you even hear it. The modeling for the pitch envelope is pretty much finished. But we'll want to loop this envelope the same as we did for oscillator A. So over here, loop, just select loop. The sound will start and follow and continue until it reaches its sustain and then it will repeat and come back to the beginning and loop again. So it just loops constantly. Now you can adjust the timing of this loop, how long it takes by adjusting this time here. All right, so the sound is currently mono, as if the fly was flying around right out in front of you. Let's go ahead and insert a pan plugin over on the live devices, expand the audio effects, and you have this auto pan plugin. You can just click and drag that right next to operator right here. We'll just need to increase the amount at 100%. The rate will adjust how fast the sound moves through the panning modulation. So in this case, I want the rate pretty slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. And for the phase, you can keep this around 180 degrees, that's fine. And for the shape of this panning modulation, we're going to go ahead and just keep this at a sine wave. And the shape of this pan, we can go ahead and keep that at zero. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. Here we go. And don't be afraid to experiment. If you have smaller little itty bitty flies like we do up here in Oregon, we call them midges and they're little tiny green bugs. And you'll probably want to 
increase the pitch over on the MIDI controller just go up an octave and sometimes they get in your ears and you got to kind of brush them away a little bit and I guess that's where I was inspired to create this sound but uh, if you want to make it sound like the fly is coming in and it lands then you can just come over here to oscillator A and just cut off the release time just go ahead and just knock that off completely so let's see I'll hold the key down here we go Okay, so you can play around with that. My name is Mark. This is Ableton Daily. Hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my YouTube channel for more videos on sound design and music. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.